Over the past year, our world has dramatically changed. Honestly, every aspect of our lives have changed. From the way we work, to the way we interact with others, life as we know it will likely never be the same. This change we feel is not indigenous to us here in the United States. It is being felt on a global scale. No country has been unaffected by COVID-19. The pandemic has caused monumental shifts in the way students at higher education institutions learn and access information. Driven by a shift from print to digital formats, competing demands for library space, the shrinking necessity or capacity to support long-term print, and many other factors, the need to optimize print collections has never been greater. My name is Jackie Lipschutz, and I'm a product specialist working with OCLC and libraries across the U.S. to assist with their collection analysis and evaluation needs. Many libraries I work with have been in the process of slowly migrating their print materials to digital content over the years. Mostly this was to meet the ever-changing demands of their patrons. However, the past year has tremendously accelerated this demand for change. For some time, libraries have been experiencing a decline in print circulation. And for many reasons, we expect this trend to continue. Many libraries have really struggled during COVID. Universities were shut down, students were sent home to attend classes remotely, and professors were forced to teach online classes. Never in our lifetime have we experienced something like this before. This created great challenges for libraries to provide patrons with the materials they need to successfully complete a class or further their research. This has prompted libraries across the world to seek out tools to help them understand their collections. They're looking to confidently answer questions like, what are my library's strengths and weaknesses? Or what is really being used in my library? They want to know things like, where do I have overlap between print and digital content? And what is it my patrons really need? Academic libraries continue to implement and refine reopening strategies but we know that things are going to look a bit different from now on. There's an increased pressure for libraries to critically evaluate and evolve their print collections. These decisions are difficult to make, but they are inevitable. To confidently make decisions on the future of your print collection, we must begin with a deep understanding of what is in your collection, how it's being used, and how it even compares to other libraries. What librarians need in addition to actionable data about their print collections are insights which allow them to make evidence-based decisions. Libraries are inundated with data about their collections. However, data by itself can be overwhelming, messy, and downright frustrating. Thankfully, OCLC can provide you with the right tools to provide these insights into your collection and can empower you to make informed decisions with confidence while setting up your library for future success. Transforming a print collection is not an easy task or one that can take place overnight. Collection analysis is not strictly a mechanical process. There's emotion involved, there's thought involved, and it takes the same amount of effort to transform a collection as it did to build one. My colleague Pete Zymet is going to tell you about a powerful collection analysis tool that leverages WorldCat the world's most comprehensive database of information about library collections. He'll share with you some of the innovative ways libraries across the U.S. are evaluating and modernizing their print collections. Pete, over to you. And hi, everybody. I'm Pete Zymet, Green Glass Product Specialist at OCLC. We are past the era of libraries building large local print collections. These days, libraries are buying more digital content, they have network access to resources, interlibrary loan agreements, and shared print arrangements. As a result of the decline in circulation, libraries are responding by offering many other services, such as increasing their individual and group study spaces, adding learning commons, maker spaces, studios, even kitchens and sewing machines. These changes have created incentives for libraries to optimize their print collection and their use of space. There are a lot of ways to leverage collection data to work toward optimizing your print collection and to articulate the value and impact of your library. 
A few examples of where analytics can help is to find materials or candidates for digitizing or locating within your collection unique materials or those that are very rare or what we call at risk or identifying candidates not for deselection but maybe to move out of the open stacks to off-site storage or mobile shelving or other ways to sort of optimize these collections. Academic and research libraries around the world are implementing programs to share the responsibility and costs of maintaining print collections. An effective shared print program empowers libraries to protect the scholarly record, share the costs of maintaining low-use titles, and reclaim prime library space through responsible deselection. WorldCat offers a representation of global scholarly and cultural records through the lens of library collections. By maintaining holdings in WorldCat, your library joins thousands of others to collaborate and share collections at scale. As you consider which print items you can commit to retain and share, you'll need detailed information to support these choices. Our Greenglass application combines your library's data with data from WorldCat, such as title popularity, other libraries' commitments, and open access availability. Greenglass pulls this information into dynamic visualizations that support evidence-based decisions about which titles to retain, move out of circulation, or deselect. To give you an example of how shared print programs work, essentially several libraries get together, they each agree to make long-term retention commitments on certain titles, and agree to share them with each other as necessary. This is very cost-effective because it distributes this burden across multiple libraries, um, and it's also just a retention-in-place program, so libraries don't have to move materials or rent storage space. And this results in ensuring access to the scholarly record and protecting titles. I want to discuss and demonstrate a few particularly interesting and applicable use cases for Green Glass, including deselection, examining a rare books collection, and tools for serials. So now I'm going to show a live example using Green Glass. What we're looking at here is an analysis at Pacific State University, which is a made up name, but the data here comes from a real institution. You can see that this analysis is for 821,448 titles, representing 877,156 actual items. Green Glass takes the data directly from the library's ILS. It processes the data and matches it against many other databases, and then provides an interface for the analysis. On this main screen, we can see various key metrics, such as the proportion of items in this library's collection that have never been checked out, or are in Hathi Trust, or are rare, or are possible duplicates, and so on. We also have a number of visualizations built into Green Glass. Uh, for instance, this visualization shows the distribution of the collection by subject using LC class, or we could look at the age of the collection by year published, and we have various overlays like recorded use. But what I want to focus on right now is to do uh, a deselection query. So I'm going to choose some filters to segment my collection to the best weeding candidates. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to look at materials that have had very little use. So I'm going to go over here to the local circulation history and for recorded use, I'm going to choose those materials that have been checked out fewer than twice, meaning they've either never been checked out or they were checked out only once. And if they were checked out, it was before 2015, so it wasn't recently. Next, I'm going to ensure that these materials are widely available. So if I deselect this title, I know I could borrow it should the need arise in the future. So I'm going to look for only those materials where there's more than 200 holdings in the U.S. And I'm also going to compare this with my ILL partners and make sure that um, at least one of my ILL partners holds this title. So I'm going to select more than zero here. And finally, I'm going to make sure that this title is represented digitally in Hathi Trust. So I'm going to just choose that this um, criteria includes Hathi Trust. So now I have a pretty sophisticated query here. The query 
is in the middle and the results here at the top, I matched on 48,250 items or 5.5% of my collection. I can export this list or I can look at it on the screen and I can work from this list. Next, I'm gonna show you a very different kind of query where we're gonna examine our rare books collection. So in this case, I'm gonna limit our location codes to just the rare book collections. So I have several that are coded for rare books. I'm gonna select all of those. And uh, you can see that uh, when I select just the rare books, I have um, 16,508 matched items. Now let's take a look and see uh, just how rare those are. So among those rare materials, let's see how many are held uniquely by me that we know of through a WorldCat analysis. So I'm gonna say that there's fewer than two known to exist in the US, meaning my library is the only one that has it. So out of my 16,000 rare books, a full 908 of them are held only by me that we know of through WorldCat. Now let's say I wanna expand that and not just look at the ones that I hold uniquely, but the ones that I know to be truly rare. So we're gonna see which of these are held by fewer than 25 libraries in the US. So I'm gonna switch this to 25. And now almost 7,000 of my rare books are indeed rare because they're held by fewer than 25 US libraries. Now what if uh, we wanna see if some of the materials that are in our rare books collection are actually not rare at all, but they might have been mistakenly put in there. So we're gonna look for titles that are held by more than 100 libraries in the US that are in my rare book collection. And here I matched on 4,576. So depending on your definition of rare books, this might be a case where some of these really aren't all that rare and to optimize my collection, I may want to remove them from the rare book collection. Similarly with green glass, we can find materials that are in the general collection that are actually pretty rare and you may want to move them to your rare book collection. And next I want to look at an example of a serials analysis. So here we're looking at an example of CSU Fullerton serials project and Fullerton has 21,317 serials titles. Now let's say I need to do some deselection and I want to find titles that I can weed that are held in a known serials archive like West. And I also want to limit my queries right now to those where I have particularly long runs of the serial. So we can do that in the query builder. So first I'm going to look for those where I have long runs. So I'm going to look at my local holdings dates and I'm going to choose local holdings span. And I'm going to say more than nine years, meaning I have 10 or more years of that serial. And I'm going to compare this with a journal archive of West. I'm going to choose substantial match. So doing that, you can see that I've matched on 2,217 titles that match both of those criteria, or 8.6% of my serials collection. If we scroll down on the screen past these tables, we can get to an actual list of the titles. So here's one, a journal of church and state. Let's take a, a closer look at that title. I'm going to click on details. And here we have a journal of church and state. And we have some information here at the top. And notice these green bars. The first one is WorldCat Holdings. So you can see that according to WorldCat, this publication started in 1959 and goes uh, up to 2021 and is continuing. So that's 63 years worth. Local Holdings, I have this journal in two different locations. And my local holding span goes from 1959 to 2012, or 54 years. So I have quite a few uh, of these in my collection. And then further down, you can see the, that it is indeed in West. And West holds 1959 to 2013, or 55 years, one more year than my local holdings. So this does meet our criteria of being both held by West and I have more than 10 years of it in my collection. So this is a, a good weeding candidate, especially if it's not being used much in my library or is no longer programmatically relevant. Greenglass takes the library's records directly from their ILS, processes and normalizes the data, matches their data to WorldCat and other databases, and provides an application optimized for analysis. 
you can see some creative uses of analytics from these examples. A growing number of libraries are using insights from collection analyses to make strategic decisions about the future of print collections and to showcase the value and impact of library services on both student and institutional success. Libraries can position themselves from the pandemic stronger than ever with an optimized and modern print collection. And we're here to support with research and solutions that empower you and your teams to advance your strategic initiatives. Jackie and I would like to thank you very much for taking the time to view this video. If you'd like to explore a collection analysis with Green Glass, please visit the website at oc.lc forward slash green glass. You'll find the latest news, success stories, and upcoming webinars. And if you fill out a request for information form, a specialist will contact you directly to answer questions, provide additional detail, or to set up a live demo. Thank you very much.